Hello, I've been asked to show off the layout of my Thormic elevator and so here it is. Now this is the probably the main part of it. Now you've got all these different Thormic levitators here and the way they work is one of them will lift you up 10 blocks. So if you have two, one underneath you will lift up 20 blocks. So that is why all my buildings here are 10 blocks high. So each floor is on another 10 blocks up. That's just that's just the way they work. And if you if you have a redstone signal going to one of them, it will block that one and any below it. So for example, okay, this should be going if I hit it. Oh, that is not good. Let me just fix that and I'll be right back. Okay, now remember if you're in creative mode, right click to select on the on the screen like this, not left click. So right click that, you'll see that lights up this line. Now the code has it set up so that it, it outputs to the certain different colors all along the bundled cable. Now since this line is on, it means this elevator this levitator and all the ones below it are disconnected. They won't go, so it only go up to like 20 blocks because it's only got two elevators there. So it should put me up to the second floor like that. Just 20 blocks. Uh, I need to find my way down. So that's how those work. And so, depending on how many floors you wish to have, is how many of these you will want to put down. Now, of course, at the top of the machine, top of the elevator, you need some more Thormic levitators because you will hurt yourself if you fall. And these, when you're standing underneath them, will slow your fall. So I'm just here, I'm falling slower than normal. You see how the normal fall speed is like that. And they actually work the same way that like the levitators going up do. And that if you put a redstone signal on one of them, you'll deactivate that and the ones above it and so it will only slow you down a small amount. It's the same distance that does you down, which is 10 blocks per levitator. So you have 2, it will slow you down 20, 3, 30, and so on. And then with our... Then now also look at the computer. I haven't... I haven't um, redone the code yet. I'm still planning on doing it just because it would be. I know of a different way to do it, which will be much better. Uh, I think. I think some of the most important stuff in here. Uh, these things with the colours. That's all for the. The bundled cable and which one it sticks out on. Now I've just worked it out and done it like that. There's probably an easier way, a more... well, I mean that's probably the easiest way, but if you wish to do a more generalized way, uh, I'm actually not sure, quite sure how to do that. Yeah, I know they come out in binary and there's certain numbers and such but that's that was the easiest way like that and then of course if you wish when you want to put it out okay let's just find out where the code is in here okay I think it might be around here hmm
Yeah. Sure. Ah, here we go. Yeah. So this is this is the function that happens when a button is clicked on. And so it means if it gets to the button, which is around this part here, if it actually finds that you are clicked on a button, then it will set the bundled output, and it uses the data that was put in that top part. And so this is this is the function that you use to interface with from computercraft to the red power bundle cables and that that's the way that you can set out how it's going to uh, which which outputs it's going to do uh, the problem I had of course was that I've got all these computers each computer running it running the mo their monitor and each one outputting the cable and I was finding that it's kind of tricky to, to distinguish between an output from some other computer and its own output the and of course if that one up there turns on say the white output and this one can also turn on the white output it no, this one can't turn off the output from that one. So that was the problem I was having with it. Yeah, so I just need to... Yeah, I'm going to make a control system. So one computer down here which does all the redstone. None of the other computers will touch the redstone signal. And the ones up there will all probably communicate using the wireless modem. And so then you can work out which one it's on and the, it will tell the main central computer to switch it on. Okay, so I'll try and get on to making the new version. But hopefully this explains how I made it a bit more. And yeah, it should be should be easy enough to replicate. Again, if you know how to do the coding yourself and you are able to code a better working one than mine, then go for it. Put it as a reply, let me know. And it'll be it'll be great to see what other people can do with this. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good one.